Amen. Good evening and welcome to Maundy Thursday. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 through 26. That is our call to worship. Traditionally, this is the night before the crucifixion when Jesus was with his disciples and instituted the Lord's Supper. So on this Monday Thursday, that is what we will be doing. No feet washing because of the time of pandemic. However, I will be washing the hands of our music director, Benjamin Berman, and we will partake of the Lord's Supper. Hear the word of the Lord, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On the last night before our Lord was crucified, he sat with his disciples. Beloveds, their hearts were not all pure, their motives were not pure, and there was much to confess for. Join now in this call of confession as we head into Jerusalem. Holy God who holds us together, if I were to place myself at your table, I would probably be Peter, misunderstanding your radical hospitality, hospitality, sticking to the rules, arguing what I do and don't deserve. Then again, it's possible that I'd be Judas, the one who betrayed you, the one who failed to see the good right in front of him, the one who might have thought he wasn't worthy of your love. If I were to place myself at your table, it's possible I would be one of the unnamed disciples, watching but not speaking, silently missing the opportunity to tell you what I believe and how much I love you. I were to place myself at your table, I'm confident that I would have made the same mistakes your well-intentioned disciples made. There is no surprise there. What is surprising is that I know 
you would have washed my feet nonetheless. So forgive me, Lord, wash not my feet, but my hands and my head also. Amen. Eternal God, wash us and make us clean and whole like only you can. Amen. This evening's scripture reading is found in the fourth gospel, the book of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 17 and 31 through 35. The fourth gospel, the gospel of John, chapter 13, verses one through 17 and 31 through 35. Listen for the word of the Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, got up from the table took off his outer roll and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share of me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to be washed except for the feet, but is entirely clean and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Verse 31. Now he had gone out. Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him 
at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, as we come to the Holy Supper of our Lord and Savior, it is fitting that we consider to what end our Lord has instituted it. Do this, he said, in remembrance of me. We are therefore to remember that our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the promise made in the Old Testament, was sent of the Father into the world, that he assumed our flesh and blood, that he bore for us the wrath of God, under which he should have perished everlastingly, that he fulfilled for us all obedience to the divine law, that he, although innocent, was condemned to death so that we might be acquitted at the judgment seat of God that he took up himself the curse due to us so that he might fill us with his blessings, that he humbled himself unto death, even the bitter and shameful death of the cross. When he cried out with a loud voice, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So that we might be accepted of God and never be forsaken of him and finally, that he confirmed with the shedding of his blood the new and eternal covenant of grace and reconciliation when he said, it is finished. This is my body broken for you, he said. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. We are therefore to believe these promises which Jesus Christ, who is the truth, has himself given us. It is his will that we be partakers of his body and blood and share in all his benefits so that, we, so that he may dwell in us and we in him. We may not doubt that he will perform in our hearts and lives all that these outward signs signify and that he who is the true heavenly bread will nourish and strengthen us to eternal life. For in this supper, we share in the infinite goodness of our Savior and are made partakers of all his blessings of life eternal, righteousness, and glory. But in this supper of remembrance and communion, we must also lift up our hearts in hope. For we do this as he commanded till he come. As we eat this bread and drink this cup, he gives us a pledge and foretaste of the feast of love of which we shall partake when his kingdom has fully come. Under the veil of earthly things, we now have communion with him. But with, veiled, with unveiled face, we shall behold him rejoicing in his glory. 
made unto him in his glory, even so come Lord Jesus. And as by his death, resurrection, and ascension, he has obtained for us the life-giving spirit who dwelling in him as the head and in us as members unites us all in one body. So are we to receive this supper in familial love, mindful of the communion of saints. As the holy apostle, excuse me, as the holy apostles say, we being many are one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Here too, assist us, the almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, through his Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. On this Maundy Thursday, I invite you all to partake of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy and right it is, and our joyful duty to give thanks to you at all times and in all places. O Lord, our creator, almighty and everlasting God, you created the heaven with all its hosts and the earth with all its plenty. You have given us life and being and preserve us by your providence. But you have shown us the fullness of your love in sending into the world your Son, Jesus Christ, the eternal word made flesh for men and for our salvation. For the precious gift of this mighty Savior who has reconciled us to you, we praise and bless you, O God. With your whole church on earth and all of the company of heaven, we worship and adore your glorious name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed Most righteous God, we remember in this supper the perfect sacrifice offered once on the cross, <clears throat> excuse me, by our Lord Jesus Christ for the sin of the world. In the joy of his resurrection and in expectation of his coming again, we offer ourselves to you as holy and living sacrifices. Together we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray, that the bread which we break may be to us the communion of the body and blood of Christ, Grant that being joined together in him, we may attain to the unity of the faith and grow up in all things into Christ our Lord. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, and these grapes have many fields into one cup, grant, O Lord, that thy whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into thy kingdom. Even so, come. Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus, the same night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, 
take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup. And when they supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ and the cup of blessing which we bless is the communion of the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, since the Lord has now fed us at this table, let us praise God's holy name with heartfelt thanksgiving. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul, who forgives all your iniquity, who redeems your life from the pit. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He does not deal with us according to our sins. Nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children. So the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. Who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us. He gave him up for all of us, that we also will give up all things with him. Therefore shall my mouth and heart show forth the praise of the Lord from this time forth forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us join in this day's confession of faith. We are each a tapestry of stories. We are our stories of fear and grief, as well as our stories of love and joy. We believe that God sees all of these interwoven truths and say to our fragile selves, come in. Come in from the cold, come in from the rain, come in from wherever you are and be here tonight. We believe that God then pours warm water into a basin to wash off the weariness of the day, the bruises of the past and the doubt that clings to us. We believe that this act is an act of love. Similarly, we believe that God says to us, eat, and God shares of God's self. And it is food not only for our bodies, but for our souls. We believe that all this happens every time we close our eyes and imagine God. And every time we close our eyes and imagine God, we believe the parts of our tapestry that feel worn and frayed are held together. So today we remember, today we say thank you. Today we know we are held together.
sin to hide, but you have sent him from your side to walk upon this guilty sod and to be. to be 